As we look at those images, we are back now with psychiatrist Dr. Janet Taylor here to talk about how to cope with the emotional fallout from the Orlando attack and talk about it with your family. And you and I were both just saying, if you have children, you are wondering, how do I even begin to explain this? But the truth is, how do you wrap your own head around it as an adult? Absolutely. I mean, you have to tap into your own feelings. You may feel scared, anxious, mad, angry. All of those are normal after a traumatic event like this. And it's difficult. I was saying that as I walked to work today, and you know, all of us are very sad, but there's a feeling of vulnerability that well, yeah absolutely there's that feeling and that thought that you know this could be me and can I still go shopping can I go to the movies and the answer is yes you have to the intent of terrorism primarily is to inflict harm but it's also psychological to make you think that you know you're not safe and you are more vulnerable and, and we have to take back that power and do what we have to do every day well let's take back that power and talk about how to talk about such a complicated topic with young children? Well, think about their ages. So certainly between the ages of five to seven, they may see things and hear things, and you could acknowledge that there are bad things that happen, but I think as parents, we can frame the discussion by saying it was bad, but let's talk about what's good. Let's talk about how to love. Let's talk about how I love you, how to be kind to other people, and certainly how to embrace and tolerate people who are different. So it's an opportunity to really focus on what we need, which is more love and more tolerance and not hate within our households and certainly within our communities. Is there a possibility that you could talk about this too much? I mean, it, we're inund inundated with images on the TV right now, every channel. Um, is that possible? You could be trying to talk and explain it too much? Well, you can limit exposure, but then you can talk about what you need to. And what you can talk about is what's good and what's positive. So again, acknowledge the bad, acknowledge the uncertainty, acknowledge your own fear, but frame it with love, frame it with positivity, even tap into loving kindness and how, how you show loving kindness to other people. So not talking about the horrific act, but instead talking about love and kindness. I think that is a beautiful message. And how can you reassure your kids when you yourself aren't even positive that you're that you're feeling safe. Well, there are things we do to keep us safe. We lock our doors, we put on seat belts, reminding them about those day-to-day -day things that are in your life already that make you feel safe. You know, access to safe phone numbers, um, who, who can you go to if you have a problem. If your kids are old enough and probably five to, you know, 12, you can do what-if situations. Mm -hmm. So whatever it takes for you to feel safe, you can make sure that you implement that with your kids and then FaceTime, you know, hugs and get back to talking about things at dinner and really making them feel connected because at the end of the day, life is uncertain, but love is, is certain. Yeah, and I love the idea of the what if scenarios, just to little peace of mind. Dr. Dr. Janet, we love having you here. Thank you. Tough topic and we really appreciate your kind words. Thank you.